it, can't it, form up. So a rich kid, you yeah. see, that's, what, that's right there. That's it. You got urea on your hands. That's right. Yes. Yeah. So. I should have washed better. <laughs> Welcome to Mighty House. This is a radio show for people with problems. Home improvement problems, that is. And for people who want common sense guidance on how to build green and live a more sustainable lifestyle. Send an email or call into the show. The Mighty House crew is on the job. This is Mighty House. All right, we're back. And uh, it's a little cold here today, but... um, we're going to talk a little snow melt and figure out how to best melt that snow on your sidewalk, your driveway, your porch, so you don't fall and slip. And uh, we just want to say thanks to the Niles Design District. Go to NilesDesignDistrict.com for more information. And you can also check us out. Just go to MightyHouse.net. You'll find out all the information you need about the show. And uh, if you want to contact us, you can do it right there also. So with and that. Don't forget to subscribe. Oh, one of those deals like. down there. Is it, where is it? Is it over here? It's over by there. Oh, it's over, over by here. Okay. Yeah, so, it's over there. Yeah, subscribe. Make sure you hit that like button too because uh, yeah. that helps us all out too. Then the Niles Design District knows that their money's being spent wisely. So yes. there you go. All right. So we're going to talk a little snow melt. It's, uh, yes. it's snowing all over the country right now. We're actually getting snow for the first time in a couple of years. Um, in, here in the Chicagoland area, got a little In the bit. studio. But now it's actually snowing inside, too. Mm. So it's beautiful. So next week I'll be on roof repair. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> ice melt. Oh, the ice damming will be next week. <laughs> ice damming. That'll be next. Yeah, yeah. Okay. exactly. So, there, so all you need there. to melt the snow in your driveway is just table salt. Yeah, that's that's your basic salt. That's your rock salt. That's this stuff you're seeing right here. The rock salt. Oh, see, look yeah. at that. I, I, I Sodium chloride, table salt. Yes. And this says on the ba- the bag right here, it goes down to five degrees. I wouldn't mm-hmm. believe that. I think you're going to be closer to 15. So just because uh, I think that's probably tested in a lab. And when you actually do some research, you'll find out it's usually good down to about 15 degrees or so. Wait, rock salt so- is regular table salt? I don't know. I eat it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Snow cones. Yeah, sodium chloride's table salt. It's just how it's mined and milled and then whether or not they add iodine. Sure. And the other cool thing is the reason why the freezing point of water is lowered is well, go ahead, Sonar. You actually had a really good explanation oh, for it. Well, yeah, it's, give it to us. It's it's water soluble, so this the salt breaks up. You have the uh whatever is attached to the chlorine yep. uh separates, so sure. now you have all of your different molecules floating around. Your water molecules can't become rigid because there's there's a, a chlorine in between i'll do the translation or, yeah for or you. there's a sodium in between yeah. so if mr floor was so, was chlorine or sodium right there that yeah. mr floor cup yeah. you can't bring your hands together if the mr floor cup's in between so try that rich can you can you reach the reach the cup that's in front of you no the other side yeah this that one? that one can you get to the cup see he can't reach it no nope. and there's salt it. in the way there's it's salt a, in the way exactly <laughs> So, so that, yeah, that's it. <laughs> so what happens with the different salts is they essentially break <laughs> up, and as long as there's more pieces, it's like a, a, a puzzle piece that you threw a different puzzle into. Sure. So it won't latch because you've got inst- you've got cats mixed in with your ice cream puzzle. See, see, I don't have salt on my hands yeah. or on the cup, <laughs> so I'm able to reach this. Rich, on the other hand, he does have salt. On yes, his I hand in his cup, and he try can't, as I may, he can't form a bond. He can't form a bond. I, no, with that not cup at all. And lift it. <laughs> no, <laughs> it just it's happens not, that way. So that's how that rock salt works, man. It's good stuff. Yeah, good stuff. So that's the that's the sodium chloride. That's your table salt, right? But and again, only work good work down to about fifteen 15, degrees. Sure, and that's also going to be the least expensive option. And uh, depending well, on where you, you are, you can get it just about anywhere. Sure. Sure. I mean, but, underground, out of the ocean, yeah. it's kind it, of easy to come by. Prevalent, yeah. It, it's pretty much everywhere. So Big old underground mines in Canada. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> and so it you know, depends on where you live. If you're further south and you don't get a lot of uh, of icing conditions and it really doesn't get that cold, this this kind of stuff's going to be okay. But if you're up in Minnesota, then you might need something a little bit stronger. And uh, that's good for summer days. 
Summer days, of course. Yes, yes you use is. that for the summer days. Yeah, I hear you. Because it so, won't work in the week. So what happens to your, if you use too much salt on your sidewalks, see this kind of stuff happens right here. And it burns the grass out. And then the crab grass mm -hmm. comes back really good and strong right in that area in the spring. Yeah. That'll be the first thing that comes back. And so, okay. you know, you want to get rid of this stuff. If you don't want this to burn your grass, then we've got some other options for you. So the next one up is uh, calcium chloride. Well, calcium chloride. But calcium chloride will still do almost the same amount of damage. Yeah. And I think it's because of the chloride as opposed to the, the bonding agent. Right. So it's a little better than salt, though, but it, it is it, yeah. at least they claim that it's it's best better for your uh, vegetation than. Well, than it's still only good to about five degrees. Uh, the calcium. Uh, no, that one. It says negative twenty five tw degrees. That, that goes down to twenty five below. Ooh, that's the good stuff right there. The calcium chloride. OK, well, and calcium uh, chloride's not so bad, but. No. Okay. No. If you're in a place that has tw negative 25 degrees anyway, uh -huh. you ain't worried about You shouldn't about be your out grass. there spreading it. <laughs> yeah. You ain't worried about your grass. <laughs> and it's not coming back till August anyway. You're, right. <laughs> you're, you're worried about the tundra. That's where, yeah. you, you know. Yeah, you're yeah, worried yeah, about yeah, the yeah, permafrost yeah. more than <laughs> you are about glory. All right. So minus 25 on calcium chloride. Correct. And then uh, also the magnesium chloride, very similar. Um, it's a little bit, that's even a little bit better for your vegetation. Um, and that one also goes down to about 25 below. Again, both of these last two products. So you're going to spend a little bit more money on them than, uh, than what you are on your rock salt. So just keep that. But in, in a sense, I mean, like in Chicago where your weather can be a stretch of 15 degrees, 20 degrees with some snow, cause it, typically it doesn't snow when it's 20 below. Right. It that's drops true. to 20 below two days after it snows. Yeah. Like tomorrow, it's going so, to be nine degrees. Okay. So, so the idea being is that you buy the safety salt, you buy the calcium chloride, you buy the magnesium chloride, you have the three bags wherever you keep your stuff. Uh huh. And then depending on the temperatures, what you put out to deal with the snow or the ice. Sure. Sure. You know, you I know. mean, there's no, because I wouldn't want to use something that's good to 25 below zero on a day when it's 15. Right. There's no need to. So, but when it does get really cold, the sun comes out, it melts that, that snow right around the, the, the pavement. And now that can run out onto the pavement. And then, then when, when it does freeze again, now you get that black ice issue and, you know, regular rock salt's not going to take care of that. So then that's when you go to the magnesium chloride or the, uh, the calcium chloride. Okay. So those are the Can we two still go up use. a notch from there? Uh, yeah, I think there's, there's one more potassium chloride. That one, that that's not quite as, it doesn't go down. I think what's that? Five below is what that one does. So pa potassium chloride is going to go down to about five below. Urea is also right around five below. So those two are going to fall in between that uh, calcium chloride, magnesium chloride, and rock salt. So, hmm. and of course, that's earthwise. See? Earthwise. The urea. <laughs> the urea. Urea. If no, no one knows what, what that is, that's. Uh... No. <laughs> No, no, no. Well, uh, did, did you say in prep that's, it's nitrogen? It's nitrogen for the most part. It's just a different form of nitrogen. Um, I, it's it's what the, what comes out of fish. It's right. The best way that I can explain it. Right. Um, and that, or really out of anybody. So uh, some of them actually just said forty zero zero, which is fertilizer. Okay, right, so right? that goes back to the I don't want to call it old wives' tale, but that's what I've always told people that if you went and got fertilizer in the fall. 3000 or 4000 you can use that as ice melt yep non slip well it can burn pets paws though yes it, it's <laughs> spicy that way well, take, um but it won't burn the grass on the sides of your sidewalk or driveway yeah it takes us anything, back to the water soluble side it it takes it back to yeah. the water soluble it 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 plugs the hole where the bond can't can't really you know, right. the two water molecules can't, this one it, can't it, form up so rich kid you see, that's what it does right there. That's it. You got urea on your hands. That's right. Yes. Yeah. So. I should have washed better. <laughs> so all, all right. of these all these products you can use. You can pick them up prevalent at the store. And uh, you just have to decide in in the area where you live whether or not it's worth it. Now, there is one product here that um, is pet safe, 
And we use we used to use this a lot when we did snow removal for clients that had dogs, uh, cats that were out, and, and, you know, and they were walking the dogs and stuff on the driveways and the sidewalks. We would use this product, uh, Propellant 49. This goes down to 65 below. And uh, you can sprinkle this out at the very beginning when it just starts to snow, and it'll just keep melting the snow. And it's good for 36 hours straight. So it works really well. Uh, it's safe for your, your plants and um, your vegetation. Where do you get and it? Safe. You have to go to their website. So if you do a quick research for Propellant 49 or check below, I'll put a link to it down below if you want to pick some of that up. You have they're to, not a sponsor, but you've used it. And they're not a sponsor. I've been they using should be a it. wintertime sponsor then. <laughs> yes, they should. <laughs> yeah. So they um I I've used them for nine for probably, months in Minnesota. <laughs> probably the past twenty five years I've used that product. Uh, huh. They've been around for sixty five years. Um, it's used on airports, all all kinds of areas because it's is it liquid or pellet? It is pellet form, yes. So um, it's very similar to what you see in in the, that shaker container there. So, nice. But and, then you sprinkle it out, and as soon as it melts, it's, it doesn't bond to the concrete. It doesn't harm the concrete. doesn't hurt metals. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's really a decent product. And, again, it doesn't burn your pet's feet, so you don't have to put those little booties on your, on your dog. So. Well, if it's 65 below, you shouldn't be going out anyway, the <laughs> dog or anybody. <laughs> the dog's not going to want to go out. You're going to open no. the door. He's going to screw you, man. I'm going in the house. No, yeah, the that. pet door's frozen <laughs> shut. <laughs> and and you hit on the the question that I want to ask. Um, when do I put it on? Do I put it on after there's ice? Do I put it on before? Do I I go out there as soon as I start seeing flurries? Do I go out there and spray? Yep. Where? When do I put this stuff on? I just bought it. Where does it go? I, I, any of the products, you would I would start at the very beginning when you see that it's just starting to snow. Go ahead and sprinkle it down there because as that snow falls on it, then it's going to be melting it right away. So that way you may not have to shovel as much, you know, so that's a, it's a, it's like almost priming your sidewalks and your stairs to, to put right. that salt in there right away. And should I reapply every day? Should I wait a couple of days as needed? Like well, if, if I'm back out there 15 minutes redoing it, what's, what's right. the, what's the point? Right. Right. So, uh, that propellant 49 will last you three, uh, three days. Wow. So, um, it'll stay out there and keep and, melting. And rock salt will rinse off. Right. As it melts, it rinses away and goes, obviously goes to the sides of your sidewalk, kills your grass. Right. So, you know, depending on the different products, you know, it's, it's going to, you're going to have to reapply as you see it needing it, you know, and if it's a big, heavy snow, you might have to put it down faster than, than if it's a light, light snow. Just like this light snow we've got today here. So you can see that coming down. I mean, yes, it's, it's hard to us. catch those snowflakes though. So if yes. I've got five or six feet of snow, I can just throw my, my salt shaker out there yes. and, and see it in 20 minutes. Yes. I, I can get yeah. to my car now. So the last thing, if you did have the ice damming issue, the Propellant 49, you can take that product. It's safe for the aluminum. It won't harm the aluminum gutters or steel gutters or copper gutters. So you take that. You can put it in whip a it. stocking. What would you say, Rich? Just that. Whip it up whip. on a roof. And then throw it up in the gutter, and uh, you can have, like, two or three of those in the gutter line. And then that, as that snow hits that, that will constantly keep your gutters clear. And it'll also run down the downspouts and won't let your downspouts freeze up. So then when you clean your gutters out in spring, you take all the stockings back out. Nice. So there you go. Sounds like a plan. It's pretty simple. I haven't had to use that stuff. No, it's, it's easy. No. You don't have to use it. You know, nope. that, that's just, <laughs> where'd you find that nope. jacket anyway, man? <laughs> He Back dug in it my out. closet. <laughs> <laughs> First time seen... I think I put it on in seven years. To be honest, I was actually more impressed that it still fits right. Yeah, it does, and it's awful, awful nice looking too. It's a nice jacket. Well, the cuffs are actually worn because I did. It was a work jacket. Oh, okay. Like the rest of it's in great shape. It's better than I thought. So. Yeah, it's good. It's for when I come back to Chicago to visit. Oh, that's why you kept it. Yeah, there pre and post COVID. Oh, cool. All right. Uh, who knows what we'll be talking about next week. But in the meantime, we want to make sure uh, you, you click on the subscribe button, click on that bell so you get notified when we uh, hit the air again mm -hmm. next time with a new topic. And uh, with that, I say let's uh, keep it square and level. Until, Until next, next week. week. Until next week. All right. See, we got it. That's we not just, too bad. I just needed one off. off. One off? <laughs> one off what? Just one off the uh, time of reading it.
now, now we got what, every other, I guess. I think sure. we can get a good five. Okay. Located on Milwaukee Avenue, the Niles Design District is a home improvement destination for consumers, designers, and contractors. For those looking to renovate a kitchen or a bathroom, expand with a new addition, or enhance their curb appeal, the Niles Design District in Niles, Illinois offers everything in one convenient location. It's your road to a better home.